Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Rachel Smith here, the business grant. I'm just going to grab my coffee and have a little mooch around. This is my very first day without the children. They've both gone back to school today. And a look of elation isn't because I'm like, woohoo, they've gone, because we've really had the most amazing six weeks um, just having a blast, you know, just spending time having fun. Um, my elation is kind of two parts, is that um, my daughter has started a new school and she's just gone in really happily and confidently and I think she's going to have a great time there. My son starts year six, so quite a momentous year for him, for us, and um, yeah, he just totally takes it in his stride. So I'm very, very um, proud of uh, my children today. And also, you know, it is quite exciting <laughs> to return back to business fully. And I was thinking about, you know, content and connection and, and what I could actually create for you today. And I really felt like this was the right time to actually share the truth about being a, like a female entrepreneur, about being an entrepreneur, whether you're female or male. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I really wanted to, well, I'll, I'll share the backstory. I'm just going to have my coffee first. So I just wanted to tell you where the inspirations come from. Morning, Helen, lovely to see you here. Have you, has your daughter gone back to school now or has she been back for a little while or has she not had school? I know Helen's um, daughter is a little bit older than my children. You get so stuck in where your children are, you know, that's everything that you know. So lovely to see you here. So I'm just sharing the kind of backstory behind this inspiration. So the lovely Davina McCall has started a campaign about... Um, really showing, oh, so Helen's uh, daughter's back tomorrow. I know they're kind of, they're, they're all different, aren't they? So Davina McCullough started a campaign which is all about um, trying to show that the younger um, generation about imperfections because, and I think she's probably acutely aware of this because she's got older children and maybe this is something Helen's aware of. But I certainly know from my friends who've got older kids is that they spend a lot of time taking selfies and then adding so many filters on them that actually it doesn't start to look like them but they're not they're not prepared to post anything unless it looks like they're perfect so Davina's kind of started this campaign where she wants us our generation to share the truth about the fact that none of us are perfect and none of us have this um, flawless skin or flawless hair or whatever that we all have these faults and so on and it really got me thinking about um, how I show up online and I know my on my personal profile actually I show up morning Victoria really lovely to have you here um, I show up um, very much as, oh, look at my amazing life on my personal profile. Um, however, over in Live Your Abundant Life, my private Facebook group, I am quite vulnerable in there. I really do go in there and share a lot of vulnerable stuff. But it made me think about really what is the truth about being an entrepreneur because certainly when I was struggling in my business, I spent a lot of time glorying up these amazing women who had the most incredible um, business coaching business who were making millions in the business and I looked at them and they were like flying around the world and that were all like beautiful and they're all wearing does that not that I'm interested in design clothes but the, you know it was that kind of ilk and they're all staying in these fabulous hotels and having the most amazing time or even some of them were hanging out on Necker Island with uh, Richard Branson and you just think oh wow that's amazing and and what they don't show is the truth behind what it takes to get there and I really wanted to start this like new season of September being really truthful about how I feel about business and the things that I do um, to help me get over any of the bumps or anything like that and I want to reassure you that wherever you are in business and I'm sure Helen and Victoria will be able to um, agree with this is that actually wherever you are in business it doesn't matter kind of where you are in business but there's always a point when you feel like giving up there's always a point when you just think I'll just stick to where you are yeah yeah Victoria's saying yes and even though I was excited about coming back to work 
this month and even though I've been fairly consistent in my business and I've been working with my clients behind the scenes and all of those things, I kind of had a moment in bed, maybe two days ago, when I thought it'd be easier if I got a job. Everything would be easier if I got a job. And I still had that moment that even though I've got clients, even though I've got money in the bank, even though I've got um, visibility and confidence and, and the person who I am now and the person who I was even two years ago is completely, it's a different version of myself. And I'd be a, I'd be a kick-ass in somebody else's business. I kind of still had that moment where I thought, it'd just be easier if I gave it all up. You know, the worry, the fear, the anxiety would just disappear. That would actually just be somebody else's kind of responsibility. And I really want to ensure that I continue to really share the truth because I think it's really frigging hard when you're at whatever level you're trying to push through to to the next level, that when you see people like myself rocking up, morning Laura, lovely to see you here, but when you see people like myself rocking up online, or posting on Instagram stories, or doing this, doing that, whatever, it can all look like it's all so perfect, and it's frigging not, it's hard work. Sometimes I feel like giving it up, sometimes I feel like getting the duvet and just stick it over my head and, and kind of not going out and not interacting with my audience and not working with my clients. Uh, so well, let's have a look. So um, Victoria's sharing it. She's definitely had days like this in the past year. It's not really what I desire and it's no longer part of my path. Fantastic. And Victoria, what would be really lovely if you could, if, if you felt like you could and you wanted to, is to actually share some of the, maybe the, the things that you have done that have shifted you from like thinking, I'm just going to give it up to going it's no longer part of me I'd love to know that because obviously I'm going to share some of the things that I do but we're all you know we all have these kind of tools in our kit bag and um oh Helen did you so Helen oh my gosh I mean Helen comes and works with me from time to time and at my last event in July she came and worked with me and she's got the most incredible business and passion for her silver jewellery and a few other things actually, but she teaches it and she makes it and she sells it and all of those things. Brilliant business. And look what Helen's just shared is that even in May, she decided that she was going to apply for a job. And sometimes we apply for these jobs and we kind of know in our heart that we wouldn't take it any further. You just want to kind of test the water. And, she, and look what she said, luckily you don't get it. Now my coach has this really interesting belief and I, I kind of agree with her. So she believes that we don't get to choose our businesses. They kind of choose us. And I kind of feel like sometimes when I've had like this down, um, downward, downward spiral with my business or how I feel about business, um, sometimes I feel like I can't quite shake my business off. That even, so if, even if I'd applied for a, a job, I wouldn't feel as if I could really still shake my business off it was kind of like sticky tip still kind of stuck to me um and obviously this is this is how everybody feels you know I work with Denise Duffield Thomas who's like a million pound business and she even shares that every time she gets to launch mode she just kind of doesn't want to do it she doesn't want to go out there and launch even though she racks in like six seven figures in her launches she really doesn't want to do it and obviously we've all got strategies and we've all got ways to break through that. And I'm going to share some of those with you. And I just wanted to let you know that sometimes when we're facing that resistance in our anywhere in our business, is we're just on the brink of a breakthrough. And then obviously our body and our mind is created in such a way that it, it wants to um, protect you. So we don't know. And um, Guy Hendricks talks about this in his book, The Big Leap. And um, he... He talks about how we, we start to sabotage ourselves, we start to pull ourselves back from the potential. So we might have been working really hard in our businesses, we might have been really focused on taking our actions forward, but the point when we're just about to break through is when the most resistance comes, and that's where a lot of people start to pull back. But when you have awareness that this is happening, and it's just something that you need to go through, and sometimes we create all sorts of things that occur, like things will break, or clients might stop paying, or you might lose a client, all this stuff happens, and if you're not careful, that starts to feed into your evidence base that you should give up. And all that's, that is, is you trying to protect yourself. And all I can say about um, people going through resistance and people 
um, wondering why they can't push through, why they're feeling a bit blah, is that if you haven't been supported by a, a mastermind or a coach during that time, I'd really kind of say, you know, be playful and maybe invest with one at, at that time. The next time a resistance kind of comes through and see what the difference is in terms of being supported rather than doing it yourself. Right, I'm just going to read what Victoria's shared here. So you remember I asked Victoria to share if she she wanted to, some of the things that she does to actually um, move herself forward. So she's put, um, some of the things that she does is that she spends time with her daughter, but she just really gets into her mindset work with a gratitude journal and a no limits journal, which writes out five outrageous things that could happen to her in the next 24 hours. Brilliant. Now there's a lady called, um, I'm just trying to find her book, um, this one, Pam Grau, she wrote uh, Thank, and, uh, Thank and Grow Rich, which is all about gratitude. I, I have to confess, look at its pristine condition. I haven't read much of it, but one of the things that she did put in it, which I do, is that she makes a statement every morning that something amazing is going to happen to her to that day. And you can be specific or you can be vague. And I have it on my reminder, on my phone and on my iPad. So the first thing that I see every day, well, every time I switch it on, is I see that statement, something amazing is going to happen today. And um, I just declare it. I just declare that that's what's going to happen. And, you know, that's, you know, what um, Victoria shared there, you know, the, the power of actually doing that mindset, doing the work to actually get yourself believing and thinking and feeling in a different way is is basically what works. Um yeah, so Helen, uh, Victoria's saying, yeah, she totally agrees with Denise that she gets a bit blah about launching. Helen says she should be launching ATM, but I'm not rushing it. I'm happy about it. I'm going to talk about divine timing, actually. Oh, so you're, yes, I love wildly wealthy women, actually. In fact, it's somewhere on my book shelf. Shelves. You end up with that many, don't you? Yeah, here it is. How to be a wildly... Oh, I wonder if it's this one. That's mine. That's my... What well, I would say that one. So this is How to Be Wildly Wealthy Fast by Sandy Forrester, which is a really easy book. All these books are mindset, honestly. So let's talk about uh, divine timing. So sometimes we are like in definitely in 2015, I experienced this pushing really hard on the business, pushing, pushing, pushing. Like everything I did was really focused, really. Oh my God, it was like crazy. I was working crazy, crazy. Oh, so Helen's waiting for the planets to align. Brilliant. Um, yeah, check it out, um, Victoria. It's uh, it's great because it's about women being wealthy, and um, which obviously we need to be, don't we? You know, we need to save the world. And um, divine timing. So, in 2015, I was definitely pushing a lot of my business, and it was hard work, and I was working long hours, and I was getting results, but it was like absolutely no fun at all. 2016 came along, had a completely rubbish, failed launch, which made me totally change everything in my business and go to one of my hacks, which I'll be sharing with you in a minute. And and now everything's fine. You know, like, obviously I have this, like, I still have these moments when I'm like, ooh, I'll just give it all up. I'll just be a, like a little, uh, um, I'll just sit at home and like poodle around and walk the dog and I don't know. I don't know, what do you do when you don't have a job? <laughs> I don't know, it's never happened. Um, so yeah, th there's definitely, you know, I think if in 2015, if I had the success that I've had in 2016 and 2017, I, I, I wasn't really the right version of myself to receive that. So it's definitely something about divine timing, about the time being right. And then on a personal note, uh, many of you know that we have been, we've purchased and we are currently renovating a cottage. And even though we're buying this cottage from a family member, it actually took a year to buy the frigging thing. And we got so frustrated. So last October, last January, and, and uh, well, so, so certainly twice, October and January, we actually thought that the sale was going to go through. So we've got, we bought a kitchen up in October, we've got our builder signed up for it, and um, the, the sale didn't go through till the beginning of April. Talk about divine timing. We have spent the time from April through to right now renovating that cottage. Nearly every single weekend we have been over there with the children, and you know that the house has been a complete shell. Uh, we've spent like we just spent the whole, whole of the summer sat outside, 
the children have had to entertain themselves. They've been running around the village. They've been um, in the stream. They've been doing things that you can do in the summer. If I think about us renovating that property in October, November, December, January, February, March, oh my God, it would have been a disaster. The children would have been in the house. It would have been cold. It would have been smelly. It would have been horrible. So even though we were frustrated for over a year and we couldn't quite understand why this sale wasn't going through, I truly believe in divine timing at that time. By getting it in April and working throughout the summer, even though who wants to work that hard in the summer, was actually completely the right time for us. So when Helen's saying that it's not the right time for her to launch something, you will know in your gut when it's the right time. So let's talk about one of my hacks. And to be honest, Victoria has pretty much nailed it. So at any point when I am having one of those moments where I just say, oh, I'll just give it up, it'll be fine. I'll just go and do something else. Um, I really have to get reconnected to who I am, who my clients are, how I'm showing up, and why I'm here. So it's kind of that vision and the mission. And it's really going back to, the, to those roots and being really clear about who it is. And just to like make sure that I'm excited because in 2015, as some of you well know, I was working with a coach and basically she was um, encouraging me to deliver her business model because that's what had worked for her. And it felt like really, really hard work and it felt like everything I was doing was difficult. And that's because I now understand that is that I was it was completely out of alignment of who I am. She's an introvert, I'm an extrovert. It's it's totally different. So one of the things that I always do is come back to that and I make sure that the things that I'm, you know, the people that I'm working with, the things that I'm doing are actually in alignment with me, that they feel easy, they feel, you know, great. And I, I come back to that. And I, then I really get really clear about what my mission is. My big mission is, is that in my time as being an entrepreneur, I have had some really down moments and I don't want anybody to experience that. I want to have accessible support for all female entrepreneurs and I want to encourage women to live the most extraordinary lives. It's, this is our time to really be big and bold and go out there and claim our lives. We do not have to work nine to five. We do not have to generate one, two, three K in our businesses. We can exceed that if we want. We can run our businesses around our families. We can, we can have fabulous, fit, amazing bodies. We can feel fabulous all the time. And I, that's really my mission. And if I think about giving that up, if I think about the clients that I wouldn't be working and supporting with, supporting, I kind of go, well, Rachel, you just are feeling some resistance and you need to deal with the resistance. So I always go back to my, my big why. I go back to my mission. I go back to my vision and I start to make sure that I'm in alignment with who I truly am. And it's as simple as that. And if I'm feeling really, really like, I take some time out. You know, I am not going to rock up on a live stream or write some content or talk about something when I'm feeling a bit rubbish. I work on myself. So just like Victoria said, she go, she takes herself off, she goes and works on herself, she doubles her mindset and all the rest of it. And one of the other things that I love to do is visualisation. As an NLP practitioner, you're using visualisation a lot in your techniques and it's so powerful. That's how, even though it took a year to buy, <laughs> that's how I generated the opportunity for us to buy that cottage. It, because I could see myself in it. I could feel myself in it. And that's, you know, when you can bring that into your visualizations, when you can bring that into mindset work, oh my God, it's so powerful. Yeah, yeah, so Victoria says she's in the timeout phase. I love it. You're, on the, you're not on the naughty step, are you? You're just on, on, on the, I'm having a pause moment. We can't be going all the time. So if anybody's got any questions, please let me know. I just wanted to let you know as well, next Friday I'm running another live event. I'm going to be running live events in York every two months. So my next one after September will be November and so on and so forth. And I'm really excited about this. I've already got seven women who are going to come and mastermind with me. And we're going to be looking at their businesses, their mindset. We're going to be having so much fun actually really coming together in a, in a collective and working on our businesses and getting really clear about what happens next and where you need some support and what what 
needs you know what things need to be put in place and if you think yeah I totally need to get in a room with women who understand what's going on just PM me and let me know oh Helen is away in Rome how gorgeous what perfect time to go away as well it won't be too hot next time Helen you'll have to come in November so yeah it's just part of my business model now we're going to be doing these live events it's really I never get invited to live events anymore. I love live events. I love coming and getting connected with real people and getting from behind my computer. But, you know, who's running live events anymore? Nobody is. So I am, and I love it. So if you really fancy that, just PM me and let me send you the details. So any questions whilst I'm here, anything I can help you with, please let me know. And that's whether if you're live or if you are... Uh, watching this back in the recording. I'm going to be sat at my desk creating some content. I've got a load of Facebook ads and ideas and all that stuff that's kind of been churning around in my head that I've not been able to get out whilst children have been here. I've got some stuff coming up. It's going to be really cool. So um, just one of the, a couple of other things. Obviously I'm over in Live Your Abundant Life, my free Facebook group for female entrepreneurs who are on a big mission to be big, bold and amazing. So if you're not part of that, come over and be part of it. If you're not active in there, come over and be active in there. Um, I've started a podcast. Um, yeah, there's a little app called Anchor and you can all do this if you wanted to. Uh, basically, you can create five minutes, up to five minute sound bites and you can create your, your own podcast. So I have, I'm up to episode nine now. So if you, you're not following me on Anchor, do that. Um, it's totally free and you'll probably connect with loads of other amazing people and you might even be inspired to do it yourself. And uh, September's kind of daily sound bites are all about getting new business ready. So Helen, have a really fabulous time in Rome if I don't speak to you beforehand. Uh, Victoria, please give me a shout out if there's anything I could do to kind of help you move forward most definitely. I know that you've got some really exciting things coming up and for everybody else just have a really fantastic day. I look forward to connecting with you again soon and I'm off to write. Bye for now.